Hey everyone, so I'm back for another session, one of our um, snapshot sessions in this series here. Um, and I was playing around with um, washi tape because you know, I'm always, actually I was working in my journal and I was doing, I was actually working with some double-sided tape. What was I doing? I think I was working on, I was working on this spread here and I, I had a little extra section. I need to put some of my um, jelly print in the page for the bucket. And so I always use when I make the jelly, when I want to make tape out of my jelly prints <clears throat> to use into my pieces, I just very simply do a really easy thing. You guys probably already know to do is I'll just take a jelly print over using the double-sided tape. I just lay this double-sided tape right on the back of the jelly print like that. And voila, very easily we have some. Just burnish the back of it a little bit, but this is a double-sided tape. So this tape right here I get from the Asian stationery stores, but you can also get um, score tape, which I'll try to leave the link for, but score tape on um, Amazon, which works well also. And then here you have a piece, a quick piece of washi tape, which washi in Japanese means paper, right? So all we're talking about is paper tape. So it's easy for us to make these out of our jelly prints. And then that way you can use these any way you desire to make your own tape. Look how good this looks. Let me cut those little edges off. Um, so here's our tape. You can see, um, get it to focus. There, see? Neat little tape from our um, Jelly prints. So I think what I'm going to do is I make the tape. I'm going to just put it in page in my journal so you guys can sort of see how that works. Let's push this back. This is my Jelly Junkadori. You guys who are following me on Patreon are over there. We're working in this page by page and having a good time with it. So um, it's a journal that I fill with a lot of tea stain and coffee stain papers. I like working on these papers. With well, this journal, we we're doing it on these, um, with all the yummy inserts. And then we just fill them up with my style of uh, junk journaling and using jelly prints. So, so we can just take a piece of this and uh, you can rip it just like you do washi tape and uh, just peel the back off like this. And we'll just go ahead and kind of line our, I don't know how much, where I'm going to put these, I'll put this across the top right now. And there we have your very own washi tape from your jelly prints. Okay. So I always do that. So I was sitting here the other day doing that. And, but then I had the, the tape sitting here and I had my plate out and I thought, I had the idea, well, suppose I, Take the double-sided tape and pull right from the the plate and see what I get. So I started fooling around with that, and I got these, which I'll show you how I did. I transferred them. Let me see. Actually, when I pull it, it looks like this, which you can transfer right from here. And I'm going to show you that. But if you want to also have a so this wouldn't have a paper backing and I'm going to show you what this looks like. But if you want to have a paper backing then you actually can lay it down on tracing paper and then we'll back it with a piece another piece of double sided tape. So I'm going to show you how I did this and I really like them and I'll show you the difference in what they look like. And then I had the idea I'm like, well, I could do the same thing. And remember how we were working on tissue paper? Um about a month or so ago, I was jelly printing on just good old fashioned tissue paper that you get from the dollar store. This is one of the ones that I've got. 
Then I said, okay, what if I take and back, as opposed to using tracing paper, suppose I take and back one of these pieces that I pull onto the tissue paper. And that's what I did with this one. I used this sheet right here and I laid it down and I backed it. And so it picked up all of the background. So you can see it picked up the background from the tissue paper after I had already lifted this image off the plate. So I'm going to show you three quick ways of making your own washi tape, using your jelly prints and using double sided tape. And um, let's get started. And if you've never thought about using double sided tape, tape to make your own washi tape, well, here's a bonus because that's an easy peasy one to do. OK, so what we're going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to show both of these techniques on the plate at the same time because I need them to dry. So we'll start with that. And while that's happening, I'll come back and I'll show you how this looks because we need a little dry time in between. So move this out the way. And I'm using I'm using three different widths. So this one is three-fourths of an inch. This one's a half an inch, and this one's an inch, okay? So it doesn't matter which one you use. Of course, you're just going to get different, you know, with some tape. And if you want it wider, mm, having my coffee. If you want it wider, then you can actually line, lay two pieces together, you know, on, the, on your paper and um, just make wider pieces. If you wanna like actually cut squares or cut shapes out and be able to put those whole things down into your journal or on your collages. Okay, so what we do is we start off by <clears throat> putting color. What well, we do it two different ways. So let me figure it out because I'm gonna use both of the plate. <clears throat> so let me get my thinking cap on here. So I want to I'm going to back it with, let's see what color I'm going to back it with. Let's do two different colors. We'll have one side that'll have some drama with the quinacridone ozo gold. And the other side is going to be just our gold. And I think I will use a stronger gold. This still 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 be pretty translucent. This is the Martha Stewart um, Pale Bronze, it's called. Okay, so <clears throat> go ahead and roll this out on the plate and just want a nice thin layer like that. Same thing here. That's a pretty color gold. A little bit more here. Just a little bit. I pulled some up, it started to dry. We don't want to do things up in nice intense color. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna let that dry a little bit, and then we're gonna actually I'm going to do some scripting on one half, and I have my little circles stamp, and we're going to do, I think I'm going to use my stays on cloudy sky, and we're going to do some stamping on this side so you can, so I can show you how you can do rubber stamps, and you can create whatever images you want on your tape with this, and of course you can use the full plate. I'm just kind of doing these small sections, and we're also going to use the Sumi ink. Um, brush painting on the other side. So that you can see it both ways. So this was with the stamping in a different color palette. And this is the Sumi painting. All right, so I want to make sure I see which piece I want to actually what I do is because these papers are so thin, I don't know how you store yours. I store them 
hanging up. So I use a clip and then I just clip them on. I hang them up on the wall so that I can get to them and they're not all crinkly and wrinkly and everything. I think I might use this piece here because I want some with some pattern on it. Um, but I don't, I might even put it right on this piece. That might be a good piece to do those circles. Okay. So I'm trying to keep myself organized here because I want a print, but not too strong of a print. Okay, so now that's dry. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take so I'm just gonna load my stamp, put the stays on. And we're just gonna stamp right on the plate. Like that, okay. Just off stamp a little bit over here. Okay, so that's one side and you can use obviously any stamp. I like the stays on cause it really does adhere and <clears throat> obviously, it um, is designed to stay in place and it won't smear and all that kind of stuff. And on the other side, we're gonna do some scripting. This will need to dry. So that's why I'm gonna get this out the way now so that as it dries, um, a little bit a lot started there so we can do the other and, and and give patience to this process and let this dry down okay so here's a couple um different ways of approaching this process ready Let's put that to the side and I'm just gonna put my plate down out the way so that can dry. And while that's drying, let's go back to me showing you how you can use the tape just like this. So we'll come back to um, the book. Okay, so now this tape right here, it, and you'll see it. So while I'm kind of skipping over um, the first part of this, which is what's happening right now, it's drying, and this will become crystal clear to you um, once I pull that. But this is literally pulled right off the plate. I'm literally taking the double sided tape like this, I'm laying it, the sticky side, right down on the plate, and I'm pulling it. And when I pull it, I get this. So that means there's no paper on here. This right here is the adhesive side with our paint and our image on it. And the back side is the um, the liner for the set for the opposite side, the sticky side, right? So literally, there's no paper between this. So if I go to just pull this off, it's all going to stick and ball up, right? Um, so when you're ready to use it. I'm gonna show you what I've kind of figured out here. So let's say I wanna kind of put this, um, I think what I'm gonna do, so I'll show you what this looks like down. Well, so I think I'll put that down like that. And then I'm gonna put this, I don't know, I'm getting too planny here. And it's just supposed to be showing you guys how these tapes look. So I tell you what, let me stop planning. You just put this down, <laughs> maybe right, because I'm gonna overlap it a bit, so maybe right there. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, and actually I'm not gonna even use a, the whole piece. Let's just take a piece of it, keep it simple. Ah, how about just go across the page like that? So I'm gonna show you how these look. That would be the smartest thing. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, you got to kind of like, I, I figured out another way of getting to the edge, an easier way. And I'm going to show you when we get ready to put this other piece down. So this is going to be a little more difficult to get off, but that's okay. I use something 
like this to get it started. You'll see, it's going to be a lot easier once. Because after I did it like this, I figured out, oh, if I had done such and such, which I'm going to show you. So you can see that this is really, it's sticky and it's literally just the, the film of the tape with um, the paint on it. And so what I figured out you do is you just kind of take your finger and you kind of, you know, smooth it down and kind of control the direction a bit until you get on there what you want. So I'll stop right there and then just kind of cut it. So you see, I literally just pulled the film, the, the really super sticky, sticky, sticky tape off of this backing. Um, and I still have this bit left on there. Okay, so what does it look like? It's totally transparent, which is really cool. So this is what it looks like. So literally that tape is down there now and you can actually see the page through it. So it's very translucent. It's basically clear tape, but it's not shiny. Um, it's, it's just, uh, this is the jelly printed side. So you actually have the texture of the paint here. And it's a good solution to the whole idea of the shiny packing tape, because you know how very few, we're not really, fond, I, after I did the packing tape video, many of you were like, oh, I like it like that because I didn't like the shiny side. And I never cared for the shiny side, although I have been able to make the shiny side work in certain type of collages, and I'll have to share that with you at some point, but I do like the more old wall built up side. But I really thought, I was thinking about it, I said, I really kind of want to solve the problem of still being able to have translucent and transparent tape and be able to see through it so it's not really all built up with paint um and then so this is the solution to that using the double-sided tape and i'm going to show you how we get to that so that's one way of doing it and that's clear down to the page now i have another piece here that actually has the backing on it so literally you could also take this very same piece and flip it over and then just put, um, once you transfer it onto, sorry, if this seems like a little confusing. It'll make sense by the end of this video. You could also just take and do what I just did here. And you could do that exact same process and lay it down on a piece of tracing paper. So now this is backed. So this is, if you have a, a collage or something you're working with and you want to just put this right down on the surface, you don't, you can just do it right to the surface. You don't have to transfer it onto tracing paper, but let's say you want to have that extra backing on it. Now you can transfer it on the tracing paper, flipping it over. You can then just take a piece of um, double-sided tape and literally just go right over top of it like that and back it, right? And I'm going to show you this again, but this way we've literally backed this, um, tape. Let's get all the bubbles out. And then what I do is I just simply take and once I've cut that piece off, I like to just tear mine. You guys know that. So I'm just going to lay this down like that. And just rip it there. And then do the same thing on this side. I guess I should do it here. <laughs> Just lay it down next to it. I sort of like this little raw, you know, sort of ripped edge, but you can take and lay this down on your um, on your cutting mat and just cut, you know, your exact or something and just slice next to it. It's your preference. So now we have this piece backed. So that's how I create it this strip. So now basically we have a traditional piece of washi tape because it has a piece of paper in between. So we, we took our first layer of tape, um, printed it, laid it and backed it on some tracing paper, any kind of thin paper. And then, or you can put it on color paper. You can put it on anything you want to put it on. That's what it gave me the idea to use 
our tissue paper. And that's when I created this. So you'll be seeing how we do this again. And then you can then back it with another piece of uh, double-sided tape, right? And then um, have a traditional piece. So let's see how this looks. We'll put this down. Let me move this stuff out the way. I feel like I have 50 thumbs here. Sorry about that. <laughs> so let's lay this right next to it so we can see what, what it'll, how it'll look different with the backing on it, right? Okay, so we're going to... Um, it's a lot easier to peel it because we have the um, the paper so that edge pulls up a little more easily. Oops, okay, well, it, I got it down before I put it where I wanted to, but it's okay. It's This tape is super sticky, so you don't have to worry about once you put it down, it's going to be there. Okay, so let's look at how this looks different so you can see. Okay, you see the difference in color? The, the first piece here is picking up the green background. And this piece right here has that white paper underneath it. So it basically keeps the color um, that you paint it without the background interference. So you can see these two same pulls, one back and one unbacked, gives you different results. So you, know, you get to play with that in any way that you'd like. Okay, so there we are. So now let's go and hopefully our plate is getting dry and I can show you how we're gonna pull these. Let's take a look. Yep, it's dry. Just a little bit there. So I'm just gonna take tissue and just sop up just a little bit of that, um, you know, I see a little dot where it wasn't dry completely. It's good. Okay, great. So now all you have to do is we just want to pick this right up. So using, I'm going to use my thick roll to get that. What you want to do so that you don't have that problem of pulling the tape off is I just take a, a piece of masking tape. You can use any spare tape. And what I do is I just kind of put it in there like that, just fold it back a little bit, just so that I make a tab. So that becomes my little pull tab, you see? Okay. Then I know that I have a way of releasing things. See, I can release more easily now when the time comes already. So let's just lay this whole thing down like that, right onto the plate, and we'll cut it here. Just sort of burnish it a little bit. And then I'm going to use my, my inch for this. So I can do it side by side. And we're going to do the same thing. Just a little bit of tape makes a difference here. So this is basically the same width. So I can just put it down like that. Okay. Lay it down. You guys know how much I love using my scripting and everything. But I mean, any, I, you know, I love the fact that we can use rubber stamps. You know, you can use anything. You know, you can draw on your book. Oh, well, I do that. See, talking, I don't forget. Put our little lead piece here so that we don't have to worry about. Um, that end not being available easily for picking up. Hold it back. Okay. So you can any kind of any of any sort of drawings or mark making that you like to make is definitely available for this technique. I'm gonna get some of this white down here because it it'll pull. A, I think it's gonna pull all of that up actually. So I'm gonna bring it down and kind of clean that white off as well. Okay, so you just kind of want to, you know, burnish it so it's on there. So this is, we're pulling it right off the plate. Create our tapes. 
Okay, so let me just have everything in order. So I know what I'm doing here. That out the way. This out the way. So one of one of them we're gonna actually put on this. And I'll show you the full process of completing that. And this one we're gonna complete by putting it on um, a piece of the tissue paper. We just kind of get everything set up here. I got stuff all over the place, as you can imagine. Okay, this is the one we're gonna work on to lay this one over, okay? All righty, so that way we're set up and ready to go to get my cup of coffee. Gotta get a little black dog here. I used to love going to Martha's Vineyard when I lived on the East Coast. Took the kids every summer. Mm. Mumped at the beach. Okay, so here we are. Okay, so now we can just literally just pull it off. You guys are gonna love this. It's gonna be so gorgeous. So see, look at that magic. It just comes right off. Look at that. See? And see those little extra little white spots where some of the paint. So what I do is I like lay it right back down on a piece of the area that I haven't, you know, put any color. I mean, that uh, was just the extra paint that was drying on the plate. And I just pick it up again. And what it does is it just picks up extra material and it fills in. So any spots that you see that feel like they're still a little sticky or something, just use your um, the extra paint on the plate like that and it will pull it all up. And when you, and to touch, it's like, see, to touch, it's not sticky. It's not sticky. It's just perfect. So it's just that easy, my friends, to pull those images off the plate on this double-sided tape. So this one, we're gonna lay down on top of this image and see what we come up with, okay? But let's go ahead and finish pulling these off. So I just use my finger. And look at this magic. Is that not magic? Oh, love it. Look at those. Oh, just perfect, perfect washi tape. Oh, love it. So I'll show you how we're going to put those that back on there. Let's get this one. And see, it pulls all of that white off. Yay. So you get this nice big chunk of paint on the tape to use. And then of course, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put it down. I'm just gonna pull up some extra down there. And I think with this one, I'm just gonna use a little bit of this quinacridone throughout it and just see where it picks up extra of the orange. See how it just kind of starts spotting the quinacridone in there, all the little places that still had some sticky areas on the tape. Let me just get this so you guys can get this thing to focus. Oh, come on, focus. Okay, perfect. You see how you get all those little spots where there was still some um, of the tape exposed and it picked up all that little quinacridone throughout it. So that's what I do to get the tape so that it doesn't have any sticky areas in it. And it just adds to the complexity and the beauty of the tape that we've just made. Doesn't get any better than this, my friends. Um, you could literally just clean your plate with this as well and look at what it leaves behind. Like you could pick up a chunk of just good um, color and have it as a piece of double-sided washi because you could do the same thing and lay, you, you, actually we're gonna do this exact same thing, you know, technique, so it doesn't matter. Whatever you decide to do, it's gonna work. Okay, cool. So this is feeling good. Um, feels like I got some down here I need to still get off this. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. So we have this and this, which we're going to do, but I, I can't resist. I cannot resist. Let's just see how we can pull this whole bit up. Let's just see what happens, right? 
it's all experimenting it's all fun and play oh see i forgot to put my little thing there so before i put this down i need to grab some tape and um i'm gonna have this go off the plate a little bit anyhow like this and i can just put this underneath there so that we have that little extra pull area when it's time to release the um, image. Alrighty, so let's just see how this does. This could be even better than um, packing tape. It's double-sided tape because it really grips, I'm noticing. It's one of the things I noticed about when I did it the first time. It really, really just grips the plate and cleans everything off of it really good. You figure it's super sticky tape, so why not, right? So hopefully this video is not getting too long for you guys. But this is what happens when I sit down and I'm trying to, you know, not make them too long so that you guys will see them at the same time. I don't stop. Okay. I've started doing some lives over on Patreon as well because it's just so much easier just to turn it on with you guys there. And uh, oh my goodness, would you look at this goodness underneath here? Oh my, look at that. Would you look at this tape? If it will focus, please. <laughs> look at that. Come on, focus camera. Please focus. Let's try to get this so you guys can really appreciate. Look at that. Wow. And that's just all off the plate, just using some good old double sided tape. So there we have it. So we know we like this. And then I do the same thing. I just take, oh, that, that tape was. That color over there was pretty thick, so it didn't really leave a lot of sticky behind, but it left a little. So we're gonna just grab some of it up like we did before, and there we have it. So there's a, that's a bonus, because I hadn't done, that's the first time I've done that. Okay, so now we have that piece. And I'll move my plate, because what we wanna do now is I wanna show you how to put these down. So, put my little tapes up here so you can see them while we're working. Okay, so same thing, show you how we transfer. So in order to transfer this right onto um, a piece of tracing paper, whatever, you just simply, because we have this little lovely tab, see, we don't have to fool with it. The tab is right there. And so what I like to do is it's going to be very sticky. So only peel back a little bit and give yourself some space because it inevitably will go crooked too. And you don't want it to go crooked off the page. See, I already had it down. You just put a little bit down. It gives you, you have a little bit of forgiveness to try to get your tape down straight. And then once you've done that, you get it going. You literally just get it going and just kind of peel, let it, let it slide back and see how I'm just taking my finger and I'm walking the tape down onto the paper. If you can see that while I'm pulling this at the same time, boom. And there we have it. Um, so we have that first piece back and it's still a little sticky. So I kind of want to take my plate and just grab Let's grab some more, which we can do. As I almost put my chair on my plate, not a good thing. I'm just going to put that down like that. I'm going to grab a little bit more. It picks up a little bit more of that orange. I'm loving that in here anyway. Okay, so that's how you create the backing. That's how you just put it right onto the back of your... Um, double-sided tape 
um, onto your tissue paper and then using another piece of the double-sided tape, we're going to, I feel like I'm all over the place. I hope that this is, that, like I'm not driving you guys crazy here. Cause I am, I am going back and forth because I'm trying to take the dry time and use and do something with it, you know what I mean? And kind of keep different things moving so that we can, I can show you more of the techniques in this period of time. So same thing, just line it up and rip it, which is what I like to do. Um, same thing. And now, now we have the double sided tape with the backing, with the tissue paper backing, so that it has the paper in between it, right? And that way, when you're ready to use it, you have, well, we still have this little piece on here. You can cut that, or you have this piece here that you can start pulling away from the tape. So just when you're doing it, just kind of keep in mind that you will try to keep little extra edge, edges and tabs and stuff so that, now this right here I'm gonna cut off because now I want that to stay flat. So I don't want this tab here and I don't need it. So this will be the end of my tape there, right? So here we have it. Now it's paper backed and this would be the version without the paper on it. Okay, so you got that now. And this right here is, ready to go. And you can also back this as well, the same way. Um, this has the paint on it. I don't think I'm going to back it because I want to play with it like it is. We're going to put some of it down, but you could back this piece as well, right? Can you see it? You know, you could back this piece, these pieces the same way that I did this. I think that's making sense. Okay. The last one we're going to do here, and then we're going to just put these down so we can see what they look like on our journal page is the same thing. We're going to take this and I'm going to run it right down here best I can. So I'm pulling the back away and laying it down. Now this right here is when it's just, you know, this is just art. Our adhesive, it's no paper there yet. So you got to kind of really work with it to get it down. And let's see. So you can see, yeah, you can begin, begin to see the other imagery underneath it. Like you can see some of the print underneath it there. So that's cool too, is to actually be able, and I used the darker, the quinacridone ozo, but I wanted sort of like a dark color feel. But if you use the lighter, Gold, of course, you would definitely see more of the um, the paper underneath, but I really like this. So we're using our dollar store. Um, tissue paper that we made these yummy prints out of. And some double-sided tape. Oh, and I know that you can actually use a, I've got, like I said, I got, the, this came off of Amazon from score tape. So for those of you who already have some score tape, that's what you use. This double-sided tape I got at a Japanese um, stationery store. Actually, I got this when I was in Australia, but I've since gotten it in here in the States in um, different stationery stores that carry, you know, Japanese stationery. For some reason, they carry a lot of this they'll carry this tape. I don't know if I have a package in here, but I opened up a new roll of it. So yeah, it's like double-sided, double-sided tape, you know, it's pretty straightforward and it has the dimensions. So, um, but also, um, when you find it at the dollar store, a lot of times the dollar store will have, you know, you know, sometimes, you know how the dollar stores are, but they'll have double-sided tape. So keep your eyes out for the double-sided tape at the dollar store because that works is just the same. It may not be quite as sticky. You know how that is. It's kind of like, but it it um, it um works well. And I don't have any as an example, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look for some more because I have seen it before. And another artist um, 
Crafty Hodges, she, I was looking at some of her videos and, um, and she actually was using the dollar store double-sided tape. And I'm like, wow, okay, cool. So it reminded me of having seen it at the dollar store, but I've never used it myself, but I have seen it. And I want to say I have some, but then I couldn't find any for this tutorial. So I am going to get some and play with it. But just heads up, if you happen to see some at your dollar store and thank shout out to Miss Crafty Hodges for that little tip. Thank you, my friend. Um, get it, grab it, because it seems to work well. And she was using it in her magazine journal. Uh, I think she was using it to hear the, to hear the cover and it worked really, really well. So yeah, good tip. So here are our tapes. Let's go ahead and put them down and finish up. So, so we can see what they look like. So we're gonna take a piece of this. Here, I'm just gonna, and the neat thing about it is that they do tear. Oh, no, not this one because I don't have the backing on it. Well, I do, but that one didn't tear. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Well, we're gonna go with this and this is, which, which piece did I just do? Oh, oh yeah, this, this has the tape on it. Oh, you know what? I didn't double, I didn't back it. <laughs> I didn't put a second backing on it. No worries. If you don't do that, no worries. I've done that before. I forgot to put uh, another piece of double-sided tape, which I could still do that right now, but why? We just put this down with a little, because it's paper there now, that's paper. We can literally just use our glue stick. So if you buy some expensive double-sided double tape and you don't want to necessarily, you know, uh, back it again, you're happy with the paper being there, then just use your glue stick and put it down and it goes down beautifully with the glue stick because we have that tissue paper is backing it. So that look, that's looking good. Look at our washi tape. Oh my goodness, look at our own jelly printed washi tape. Oh, this is the best. So let's take some of this and put it on here. This is with the paint. So here again, I'm just gonna, I could use this edge with the tape, but I wanna just see if I can, I'll just pull it off here because I wanna get this piece, this end down. I don't mind fooling with it. So this one doesn't have the paper backing. Come on now. Let me just use my, sometimes it's just easier just to slide the X-Acto blade underneath the edge of that tape. Here it is. So let's put some of this down. Oh. Actually, I think I'm gonna overlap it a little bit. Why not? Let's play with that. Oh, cool. And then just roll it down like that. And when we get to the edge, we just cut it. And then the rest of it will roll right back up on our Backing for the next time. This is looking good. Oh, love it. So look at that. And that's that doesn't have any backing on it. That's just a double-sided tape and the uh, paint. So what haven't I put down? So I haven't put this one down, which is, this one is the other one that's the, This is the double-sided tape. Okay, so this is the same thing that as this. I mean, the same thing as this one where I used the tissue paper, but then I came back and I actually put a piece of, see, I put a piece of um, double-sided tape on the back of it. So this is the version where you can put the tape on the back of it. Um, for, um, versus the glue stick, right? 
Boy, I tell you, we had so many different versions here. <laughs> I hope you guys are still with me. I'm sure you are. You all are pros. You know how this is done. Okay. So here again, let's just go ahead and use the bone folder and just burnish it a bit. And you can definitely burnish it because it's it's acrylic paint. It's it's down there now. It's good. So the last one to show you would be this is the one that I backed. So the one that we just did where I backed it. Let's just put this down. Now I'm trying to design the page. Okay, this is perfect because this is in my jolly junk dory. So that's a nice little writing space. I need to put something up there. But this would be just a cool little place to write, right? Next to the tapes. I could make notes or whatever. So here, let's just go ahead. And this is with the paper. So I'm just taking the paper in to make it easy. Go ahead and lay this down. Try to get it straight as I can. I'm kind of working over in this corner. I'm pretty ambitious here. Try to get this thing straight. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and just cut this off. Okay. And then this piece, I think what I'll do is I'll just put a bit of this up over here. Just going to double over what's there, right? Just kind of creating a collage element. On the back side, I'm just going to cut this off. Oh, okay. Why don't we just wrap it around? You guys know how much I like to wrap things around to the other side. So let's go ahead and do that. So we already have a starting point for that side. And then here where I had the extra paper still on it, I'm just going to go ahead and let's just rip it. We we'll need it. And there we have it. <laughs> a journal page done and complete with jelly printing with a uh, jelly with double sided tape where we make it our own washi tape from our jelly plate using Sumi ink, using the stays on ink with rubber stamps. So we all have rubber stamps. You all probably have stays on or can get that pretty easily or any other permanent ink, any other permanent ink that you have will work good with this. And um, we just made ourselves a whole page of, now I kind of, I don't want to stop, but I know I have to. I'm trying to see where I have, I actually have a stamp that allows me to put some, some lines down, but who knows where it is right now. So I'm not gonna take your time. But I have a stamp that I can literally just put, Oh, I know what I'll do. I can literally just put, I feel like I want to finish this with you all. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I have some paper here that's stained. And it's, um, it's paper that says passwords. <laughs> but it has lines on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually put the line piece on there. So let me see. How wide is this? This is uh, about an inch and three quarters. You know, I'm not big on measuring, but we're gonna, so I'm gonna take this and rip it off here first. And then I'm going to figure out my inch and three quarters to include this line. I want, I want that line on there. Let me just go ahead and rip it off like this. So I get a bit of that line. This is um, this is some paper that I got. You know, like if it's a pack of like old paper that I guess when you keep things in binders, and uh, we kept like before we kept everything stored in cell phones. I don't know. I just found this whole pack of stuff, and I thought, oh, that'd be cool to to tea stain and coffee stain. So I did that. And then we're going to use this piece in our journal. So 
let me just kind of fold this down. That will make the most sense. Then I can see exactly where I want it to end. Okay, there we have it. And what we're going to do here, we're going to make this as a writing spot. And, oh, that's not straight. Look at that and see that. Okay, that's better. So this is going to go down as a writing spot here. We'll just get rid of this bottom. Okay. And, oh, how cool. So on the back side, it still says company password. Oh, well, maybe I should put that down. Wouldn't that be neat? Why not, right? Except for I did want it to be more of a writing spot, but like that. Huh, what should I do, guys? Could make it a flat, but it's not big enough. I'll do it like that, because that's kind of cool, isn't it? So I'll do it like that. If I want to write, I got a little bit there. I can always do a some kind of other fold out or something. But let's just, let's go with the aesthetics of it, right? Let's go with the sort of the vintage grunge and enjoy that bit of it. Okay. So I'll just go ahead and use my double-sided tape. Well, I wasn't planning on doing a journal page with you guys, but we got a journal page done and we got a, um, a washi tape technique session. That's fun. I'll put this here. Okay, there we have it. These colors all work well with this tea stain. Okay, so here we have a page of my Jelly Junkadori. All of our tapes. Isn't that cool? We made this little discovery together. I like that. So there we have it. So get your double sided tape. Pull out all those other extras that I know you already have and get to making some fun tapes because these are all just, I love them. And the texture and the feel of them, you just feel all that paint and you can see all of the paint. And you can start off just by taking your extra throwaways and off pulls of your um, jelly prints and just back that like this very first piece that I did that was just used with bits and pieces of the jelly print. All right, there you have it. Thanks a lot, guys, for hanging out with me. And um, if you like, please like. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the little bell, like they say, so that you can make sure that you get the notifications when I do the next video. And the next one I'm going to do is going to be, we're going to be back on the Rolodex, and we're going to actually be jelly printing with the Rolodex cards. We're going to play with that have some tape ready because this tape, which was what made me think about the tape as well, because I thought the tape would be so cool to have it available for those little cards like that. So we want little bits and pieces of our jelly printing or our texture or paint, because I really want the cards to have volume in the painty feel of jelly printing. So I thought this would be great for that. So make some of those up. And, um, until next week, I'll see you guys. Take care. Happy creating. And thanks again for hanging out with me and commenting. I always love talking to you guys below the video. So let's keep that going as well. All right. Take care. Love you all. Bye-bye.